hey guys welcome back to another video wait my seat is too low so let me fix that so i got my caramel macchiato here now it doesn't have like the very clear demarcation of like brown coffee on top and white because i poured it a little too fast but taste test mm. I'm not gonna lie I am not lying and I share this on my Instagram so if you're not following me on Instagram yet definitely <laughs> definitely do so here I'm gonna just insert it right go check me out on Instagram I share like daily updates on average um, I keep pretty active over on Instagram the most and in my story so even if i'm not like posting on the feed for a while chances are i'm keeping you all updated so that's the best place to stay connected with me so back to this caramel macchiato it is ridiculous how easy it is and i'm not substituting like it really does taste like it so this is a cold one right it's the trick to getting that like cool look that cold caramel macchiatos have through the clear starbucks mug well not mug but cup you have to pour it slowly i forgot because i'm forever ever since learning how to make this i'm always making like cold and hot now with the hot one you throw it in quickly um and it's fine because it's in usually in my mug like this so it doesn't really matter how it looks and you kind of wanted to mix a bit in that one because that's how you get that real authentic hot caramel macchiato like it's all sweetness it mixes up but with the cold one to get that look you have to pour it slowly so it settles on the top it'll eventually mix up like this but you know when they call your name and they slide it to you it's brown on top white at the bottom and it looks so cool right mm. Mm -mm -mm. so i'm gonna tell you how to make it with the actual authentic ingredients but however when i first made it i used a substitute so i'll show you all about that substitute that i used and that substitute well i'm not gonna say what it is but i will say what i'm substituting is the vanilla syrup so i didn't have vanilla syrup on hand and it wasn't one of the items i could have grabbed up when i ventured out to learn how to make caramel macchiatos and i actually learned how to make it right here on youtube so i'll actually link to that video as well in the description because hey you gotta give credit where credit is due but i'm also going to show you how i made it and how i substituted one ingredient but again like it's so good it's so good like you don't even know to, need to go to starbucks again if this is what you go there for not saying that you need to like boycott or anything like that even though i'm going to be getting into the whole black lives matter issue which is not so much an issue anymore since everybody has seemed to like gone back to life as usual but those who know no and are giving them this side eye and i'll tell you where i stand on that matter later on in this video but for right now i'm just excited that that sent me down the road of learning how to make this and i wish i learned to make it sooner now with what happened with the black lives matter situation i immediately side eyed them right and it also made me realize that i was way too heavily dependent on starbucks i think it made a lot of us realize how much dependent we are and there are a ton of other options and i think it's also very similar when it comes to like the online world of marketing how we usually gravitate towards these known counterpart rather than the underrated person or especially the underrated black person specifically so separate to black lives matter even though they 
try to do damage control within 24 hours i had already set out on a mission to not be so dependent on a coffee place because let's let's just say they didn't retract and it turned out to be like this all out big boycott i love this drink and i just realized like it's not even like a price perspective or anything because i was supporting regardless of the price because i just love my starbucks caramel macchiato and I need to take a sip before it gets any watery. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. If you're on my Instagram, you all know how much I love this, how much I'm obsessed with it. A little bit embarrassing how much I'm obsessed with it, but hey, it ain't hurting nobody, okay? So anyway, it's ridiculously easy how easy it is to make and how simple it is to make and i'm not even going to talk about like price because i haven't really actually sat down and calculated but you could definitely make this at home you know you really just need milk espresso coffee and if you don't have an espresso there's instant espresso and there is uh, the actual like machine but it's instant espresso and then there is just using like really strong coffee and after like analyzing the instant espresso i know exactly what i can use as a substitute moving forward right so milk your espresso your caramel syrup and your vanilla syrup it sounds super fancy but really and truly you don't even need the vanilla syrup but if you want that authentic starbucks caramel macchiato taste you're gonna use the vanilla syrup why it's just sweetener i wanted to know like what's the difference between this and like vanilla essence or any type of other syrup why can't i use something else and really and truly after searching for this syrup online one of the products actually said cane sugar well no cane vanilla cane syrup i was like wait is this just another form of sugar instead of granules it's just flavored sugar that's all it is and i try not to drink put added sugar in my at home coffee mixes um, i just use my coffee creamer and because that's already sweet i don't bother to add sugar because that's already sweet so honestly if you're not into sugar you're trying to cut down on your sugar intake then you don't want to put the vanilla syrup save yourself the box and just omit it you don't have to have it but if you really want that kind of sweetened taste like i wouldn't even say add sugar granules the substitute that i actually use is coffee creamer i use the caramel macchiato coffee creamer and that's my cheat and it's not even that much so the ratio that i use is actually like if i'm making like a cup or a glass of this you'd use like one cup of milk but instead i use about three quarter cup of milk and a quarter cup of coffee creamer and i get the taste there you have it so that's how you can even save yourself a little bit more money instead of buying the vanilla syrup yeah because that's much more expensive than coffee creamer and then you can also just have your coffee creamer and when you you don't want to make a caramel macchiato you're you know adding creamer to your regular coffee so it works both ways and i just love this absolutely love it so in the tutorial is i will be showing you how to make it hot and i'll be showing you how to make it cold it's the same process but i'm going to show you anyway just so you can like see the walkthrough because there's a little art to the madness or an art to the science of making it but okay so the black lives matter issue and where i stand on it so even at the beginning i'm being outraged at what happened with starbucks if you don't know what happened with starbucks i'll try to find some resource where i could link into the description so you could read more about it but essentially 
very quickly they were limiting employees to wear any type of merch that showed any solidarity to the black lives matter movement and that had me looking at them sideways right even though they did damage control within 24 hours and said oh yeah sure you can do it <laughs> How could you just say no one minute? And as soon as you get an uproar, it's just like, oh yeah, sure, you can, can, you can do it. Like, no big deal. Like, you just can't switch up like that, you know? People will forget, clearly. <laughs> but those who care won't forget. Those who have any level of strength won't forget. Now, realistically speaking, especially if you live on the islands in the Caribbean like myself who is based in Trinidad and Tobago there aren't a lot of places that has a culture it's all about the Starbucks culture where you can come sit do work collaborate with other people in your field have meetings there's no other place that really gives you that experience as much as people like say oh yeah there's a coffee house there's a coffee house there there isn't anywhere that gives that experience authentically throughout you know the nation that is readily available do not even tell me about rituals because the customer service sucks ass and i make no apologies for it come on you know right if you're a trinidadian you know when you compare customer service locally and customer service abroad it reflects the same way when it comes to these two coffee houses and i'm not about it all right so <laughs> rituals aside from the customer service just they don't cultivate that culture the way how they build it the way how they lay it out it's just not comfortable like that and it does not encourage you to come and sit down and hang out like no it, it just doesn't okay so <laughs> Don't tell me nothing about support local, okay? Support local needs to get its act together at the same time. So anyway, realistically speaking, I would still go. I knew, like, I'm not going to kid myself. I know I'd still go to Starbucks. I know I would still occasionally support them if, you know, I have an early morning, something that I need to go to and, you know, it's just convenient for me to pick it up. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be fake. But at the same time, it was a realization for me that I know I need more options, where I could get more options. Because I'm such a huge fan of Starbucks and I love their coffee, I also brew Starbucks coffee at home. So for the very least, outside of the actual in-house experience of actually buying coffee or going there to sit and work and do meetings at home, I could diversify my coffee range, my coffee options. So I have a coffee maker. Why don't I use other brands? Um, even the local coffee shops sell coffee. I could support that instead. So I have just been on a journey of being self, what do they call it? Self-reliant, right? I want to not have to rely on Starbucks to get my caramel macchiato fix. So I learned to make it. So that's also going to cut down on how often I visit there. Even if I have an early morning run, I actually don't have to pass there on the way to where I'm going. I could brew my coffee, use my travel mug, put it in here and go on my early morning meeting or my early morning shoot. Like I don't have to. And I like to be in situations where I don't have to do something. It's more of an option. And when you don't have options, you kind of have to like put up with the status quo so to speak and that is me and i don't need to look around and decide um what i am boycotting and what i'm doing and what values i what what matters to me and my values based on what people are doing i don't jump on a bandwagon you know, I see a lot of that happening when it's like, oh yeah, we're boycotting this or we're boycotting that. That's great, you know. There is power in numbers and we do need to band together for causes that we believe in. But we have to also be strong enough within self to not have to wait on others to band together with us. 
so I would say that I'm not like an outright boycott you know I will just say I boycott like minimally like I'm giving you the side eye but I know like I love the ambience I love the culture I'm still gonna go there for meetings and I will buy every occasionally but it's gonna be cut down a whole lot especially now that I know how to make it and that I know that they're just not here for BL, BLM like we think they should you know they can retract statements and change their mind but we know we know where they stand and uh, just try to be as self independent self-reliant as possible and that goes for everything in your life you know always try to find alternatives to the status quo or just learn how to do things yourself so that you know how to do it yourself like i am a firm believer in being self-reliant in all aspects of your life even in your personal life like don't depend on anybody for anything if i make this video way too long <laughs> you're gonna get to the fun stuff and that is to make the coffee okay so here we go i'm going to make a hot one and a cold one right so this is what i'm using for my espresso as i don't have an espresso machine right and this is what i like to use to measure my shot of espresso so i use like about a teaspoon of this if i wanted a bit stronger i put a little bit more than a teaspoon i use this to help me measure things out and i'm going to get milk and these are my other ingredients all right so I'm going to start with making the warm one. So because I usually use this, this is metal, I can't warm it up in the microwave. So what I would do is I would just pour out how much I'll need, right? I should turn this some more because, yeah. So when I'm making a cup, well, my serving is usually about a glass, right? I'm going to heat this up. I'm not making much. So because to hack not having vanilla syrup, which is a sweetener in this whole thing, I just use this for my sweetener and that hacks it for me. So I'm not going to fill it all the way up to a cup. You can just know that you want the ratio of milk to this to be about three quarter and a quarter whatever your serving size is i'm gonna heat this up so i can froth the milk because the milk isn't gonna froth cold that's one thing to note and what do i use for my frother well let me go put this milk to heat and then i'll show you what i I actually use a handheld blender, right? That's what I use with the swizzle attachment, which is, oh, I use a swizzle attachment, which is this. So I'm just going to put that on there and then I'm going to swizzle that milk okay. so this is warm enough I'm gonna off this So I'm going to put this in there. I'm going to try to get this frothing experience on the camera. And I use the lowest setting, right? So if you have a hand blender, use this. If you use the high setting, it's going to be too powerful. You're going to make a mess. 
and then I just start off gently on the low setting. So let's do this. put in the caramel macchiato I should have even put that in when I put this to heat so I'm gonna do it now but those are the steps right now okay, I did not interfere with the temperature Okay, so I don't know if you heard that, but what I said was it did not interfere with the temperature too much. So I'm still able to froth the milk. Alright, and now I have a nice frothy texture to dump my espresso in. And then we're going to do the famous cross hatch. So you do a circle and then the cross hatch. And that is it. So this is what your end result is gonna look like. Then I get my cover, close it up, and I enjoy my hot caramel macchiato at home because I work from home, and it's just so so good. <coughs> okay, so now for the cold one, same steps again, except we're not gonna heat up the milk obviously right so I'm just gonna do this three quarter again and fill this up All right so I'm gonna wait this time I don't want my espresso shot to be piping hot and you'll see why I mean it's still gonna be hot because they say you're not supposed to like let espresso cool because then it gets bitter but it's totally up to you I just haven't tried it I'll put in the milk and the trick to get in that Starbucks like brown on top and keeping the white below you have to pour it really slowly so to help me pour it slowly I'm gonna put it in here because it's gonna make a mess if I try to pour from this cup and then you fill this thing up with ice and you're not getting to put in more ice than that and then you have to just pour it on top really slowly I think I'm gonna put more ice so that the espresso does not melt the drink and make it watery but I'm also running out of space so let's just do this pour it slowly 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 all right and then you get your caramel and you just drizzle it a bit and there you have it cold caramel macchiato it's beautiful isn't it Ta -da! we are back and that is how easy it is to make a caramel macchiato ridiculous right like it's ridiculous how easy it is to make it hot cold same same ingredients just the process is a little bit different you have to pour it slowly if it's cold pour it quickly if it's hot it doesn't matter and then doing the cross hatch for the hot you don't have to do the cross hatch when it's cold because it just doesn't work out you just have to drizzle and you're good to go and you're good to go mm. 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 This is so good.